Good morning, University Mennonite Church. <laughs> those of you attending on Zoom and those of you here in the sanctuary, welcome, welcome, welcome. First part of our service will be the prelude, and this started back when we were all blown apart and separated in our own homes by our worship coordinator, Ben Weidman. And I don't know about you, but it's one of the things I most look forward to in a Sunday morning. So let's start with our prelude. See what I mean? <laughs> if you'll join me in the call to worship, please. Christ is like a single body that has many parts. Therefore, the foot cannot say, I am not part of the body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. If one part suffers, all parts share pain. if one part is praised, all parts share joy. together we are God's body, each of us a part of it. Peace 
builders are not just people we see on screen or hear about in oral stories, but also friends, colleagues, and family members. People we become close to and who are part of our lives, MJ Sharp is one of those people. Known to many in the congregation, he was also a close friend to some of us. The picture on the slide is of Michael J. Sharp. He's second from the left, participating in a 2013 meeting at a camp for internally displaced people in the town of Shasha, North Kivu, Eastern Congo. Mennonite Central Committee established the annual Michael J. Sharp Globe Maker Peacemaker Award, which will recognize and encourage courageous peace builders across the world. The award will be open to a person or organization who is currently involved in peace building and is an MCC partner or with whom MCC has had significant engagement. The award, which will include a monetary sum of $4,000, will be stewarded by the MCC United Nations Office. <coughs> Dust, sorry. With the awardee chosen by a global selection committee of MCC staff, the first recipient of the award will be announced in May 2013. On March 12, 2017, Along with his UN colleague Zeta Catalan of Sweden, Sharp was ambushed and murdered by unknown assailants in DR Congo. A UN expert on armed groups, he was on his way to meet with a new militia group and to document human rights abuses. He was 34 years old. MJ's Catalan interpreter, Beitu Shintella may also have been killed, but today he and three motorbike drivers are still missing, according to conflicting news sources. Prior to MJ coming to DR Congo with MCC in 2012, courageous Congolese were working for many years, risking and sacrificing their lives for peace building in Eastern Congo. When MJ came to DR Congo, these Congolese welcomed him, educated and connected him to networks, encouraged him in his frontline peace building work with MCC and later with the United Nations. After his murder, MJ's name generated national and international interest. The peace building work of Congolese partners still continues. MCC consulted with MCC Congolese and African representatives who support the ward in the name of Michael J. Sharp, given his commitment to peace building, anti-colonial work, and Mennonite peace witness. As a young adult, MCC hopes that the award will be an inspiration to other young adult peacemakers. I'm lighting the peace lamp this morning in memory of MJ. Please stand as Joyce Hall leads us in a couple hymns.
With the prayer of confession, we're going to even deepen our souls more into worship. And when we are finished reading, I invite you to stay in a moment of silence. Let's begin. For failing to love others as you have loved us. God of grace, forgive us. For plundering the earth and abusing the planet, God of grace, forgive us. For losing heart and abandoning hope, God of grace, forgive us. We offer our prayers. God forgives you. Forgive yourself. Be at peace. Amen. I invite the children to come on front because who knows what Marvin Hall has got for us. Did someone have a birthday this week? Yes. Who? Me. You had a birthday. Well, was it fun? Do you feel older? Mm, not really. Okay. Well, that, yeah. Okay. Well, welcome, you guys. Glad to have you here this morning. And I'm going to tell you about a hobby of mine. Do you know what a hobby is? All of you know what a hobby is? Okay. Well, I have this hobby that's kind of strange. Most people don't have a hobby like this. But my hobby is studying grasses and identifying different grasses. Here is a grass that I took out of my yard this morning. It's kind of old and desiccated because it's in the middle of the winter. But in the summer, this was green and had a nice uh, seed head up there at the top. But I like to find these things. Do you know in the world, there are something close to 10,000 different species of grasses. Another bit, of, another bit of trivia for you. There are three grasses that provide almost 80% of our food that we eat in the world. Do you know what those three grasses are? Wheat, Wheat is one. Barley? No. Rye? No. Oh, just, um, hay? No. <laughs> what about corn? Corn is a grass. Yes, corn is a grass. And there's one more. We don't grow it here. grow it in the south some. It grows in water a lot. Rice. Rice. Those three grasses provide food and calories for about 80% of the calories we eat. Just three grasses. There are some other ones, millet, and some of those are grasses too. So grasses are really important, but I love just to look at them and identify them. Now, if there's 10,000 of them out there, how many of them do you think I can identify? Well, I can tell a few more than zero, but not too many more, okay? So maybe, maybe in my lifetime, I've seen 150 of those 10,000. Maybe 200? No, I don't, I don't think. I've got quite 200. There's maybe 20 of them I can just look at and identify without having to look anything up. So, and, but my hobby, I love to identify grasses. And the way you identify grasses is pretty complicated. You have to really focus on it. So here's... These are things, these are things the way you identify a different grass, okay? So you look at a grass and you think it's just green, right? But there's other things here. And the stem comes up off of the grass. Sometimes the stems grow on top of the ground like this. Those are called stolons. And you can identify certain grasses because they grow this way. Other grasses have a stem that grow under the ground like this. Those are called rhizomes. So you can narrow down which group at the end of it has stolen the rhizomes or grows straight up and doesn't have people with it. Do you know what kind of rhizomes that I know? What? Quack. You got it. Quack grass. That's right. Quack grass is notorious for, for rhizomes. And those are those are a problem because when you go to kill quack grass and you hoe it, you cut, cut it off here and hoe it out with a hoe, then there's more buds back here that start 
growing and it just spreads more and more the more you try to pull it out. But then you have to, like, down. You have to get the rhizomes. No, you have to get the rhizomes, and that's hard. Okay. Also here, this is where the uh, the blade, the leaf comes up and off of the plant. Sometimes this thing that comes around the stem there, sometimes it grows together, sometimes it's wide open, and you have to know those things to know where to place it. The other thing is sometimes there are things growing down here, okay, that's called an oracle. Uh, and then there's grass where they have hair on the leaves or no hair on the leaves. So it gets really complicated, but you can narrow it down pretty much that way. Over here, this is the flower. And there are three different types of flower grasses have. Okay, where the flowers look right to the stem, off on a side shoot or off on a double side shoot. So there's different to those. And then you look at this, and there's things called glooms. These orange things are glooms that go around the flower. And then these pink things are palea and lemma. Have you ever seen a palea or a lemma? I bet you have. You probably didn't even know it. You eat popcorn? You get little things stuck in your teeth sometimes? That's the paleo and the lemma. They were hooked onto the popcorn when it popped, okay? So those are, so you look at all this, and it's really complicated. So here, I brought just some of the, some of the books I have to identify grasses. This is sort of the, the, this is just grasses in the United States, okay? So when you're gonna identify grasses, you have to have some sort of a, a key to do it. So you can go ahead and take a look at those if you want, and pictures in there. So some of the keys that I use have yes or no answers to them. So it says, the, the book may start out, does it have rhizomes? If it's yes, then you know it goes to a certain group. If it's no, you go to a different group. And if it has no, sto if it, if, say it has rhizomes, and you say, does the, is the sheath closed on it or open? And you just keep going and going. And sometimes it'll take me two or three hours of digging in here to finally narrow down what it is. Okay? Now, when you're doing that, you have to really focus. Because if you don't, and suddenly you answer a question wrong and say, is the sheath closed or open? And you get that wrong, you go down this rabbit hole a long ways before you finally find out, I goofed up. I got to go all the way back and start again. Okay? So you have to really focus on it. Well, there are things you guys focus on all the time. Like you do homework, you have, you have to focus on that homework because if you've got a math problem, you can't just not focus on it or you come up with the wrong answer, okay? So my hobby is this, and you guys have other things that you focus on. Coloring, sometimes you can get coloring, make sure it's just inside the lines, you have to really focus, you know? Uh, there are other things that all of us have to focus on, and that's our faith. Sometimes we have to really focus on our faith and think about it and ponder it and decide what we believe and how we believe to live as good Christians, okay? So today's sermon is gonna be all about focusing and this is something I focus on sometimes, it's just a hobby. Uh, and you guys can think of things that you need to focus on, okay? Thank you very much for coming up and you're welcome to go back to your seats now. Romans 12, 3 through 13. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the encourager in encouragement, the giver in sincerity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, 
love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in affection, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, pursue hospitality to strangers. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here worshiping together. We're going to continue our journey with Romans 12 this morning. If you've been here for the last few weeks, you'll know that Pastor Kate began three weeks ago talking about Paul's letter to the Romans and Romans 12 in specific. Continued the next Sunday by Bonnie Klein Smeltzer. We took a week off to learn about our new hymnal and we're back again with another sermon focusing on this specific chapter in Romans. Today I want to focus on focus, focus and finding our place in the body of Christ. But before we focus on focusing, you might be wondering about the funny basket and chains on our bulletin that is filled with frisbees. This morning we're going to talk about disc golf. Marvin talked about his focus on grasses. One of my focuses is on this weird sport called disc golf. And I'll give you just a little bit of background about how I found my way to this sport. About a decade ago, I had some youth pastor friends while I was a youth pastor in the Satterton area and noticed that many of my colleagues kept a bag of strange looking Frisbees in the trunk of their car. And I inquired and found out these weird looking backpacks or bags were filled with different kinds of discs to play the game of disc golf. I learned that as youth pastors, they moved from place to place. Youth pastors have this interesting job where you seem to always be moving from the church building to coffee shops to high school events to youth group gatherings like bowling, movie nights, retreats. We're always moving, but sometimes without the ability to return back to our offices in the church building. So there'd be these downtime spaces, just short spaces where you didn't have enough time or if you drove back to the building, you have to leave right again. And in that downtime, I learned my colleagues would play disc golf. In that Southerton area that we lived in, just north of Philadelphia, it was scattered with free disc golf courses. So their discs were in the trunk of their car just in case they had a bit of downtime. And quickly, I began to do the same. So disc golf, for those who don't know, plays a lot like regular golf but with a flying disc. Players tee off from a designated tee location, and they try and get their disc in the basket in the fewest amount of throws. So just like traditional ball golf, scoring is kept in relation to par, the amount of throws you should get on a particular hole. And instead of carrying a bag of golf clubs, disc golfers carry a bag of different discs. And while you can play quite simply with just one or two discs, it's pretty easy to play that way, you can also get really nerdy about it and really focused in on distance drivers, fairway and control drivers, mid-range approach discs, and different kinds of discs that turn left or turn right, depending on what you want the disc to do. So the more I played disc golf, just like a lot of things in life, the more you focus in on it, the more I wanted to improve. So I found myself watching disc golf videos on YouTube, going to grassy fields, soccer fields, things like that, to work on my form, to practice my distance. I even wound up buying a practice basket to work on my disc golf putting. Leah's wise to be moving, I think. <laughs> Here's the thing, while I've gotten better, as you can see, two out of three is not bad, I still miss. And I still mess up the simplest of putts, especially when the pressure's on. When I'm playing the weekly club league round or when I'm playing in fr against friends or in a tournament, there's still these moments where I think I should be able to make something and then I miss. Try as I might, I can't always find my focus, even on something I really love focusing on. 
my mind starts working through all the possibilities. And I know if you have something that you really like to focus on, there's this danger too in getting a little bit of drift in that focus. If I miss one, how far from the basket is it going to roll away? Will my next shot be even farther if I really try and get it there? If I'm putting here in the sanctuary, will I hit Leah in the front row? It's easy from just a few feet to just drop it in the basket, but what about further back? What if you're standing like here? It's easy from a few feet away, but I missed. There's a steep drop off. There's a course near here that's got ponds around it. What if there's river or water? Really what I'm saying is I wish I had focus like Ricky Waisaki. You might not know who Ricky Waisaki is. Hopefully the remote works for us. This is Ricky Waisaki. Ricky is currently the number one ranked disc golfer in the world. There is world disc golf rankings. One of just a handful of players signed to million dollar contracts. That's right. We live in a world where you can play disc golf and get a million dollars. <laughs> Ricky has been known to have extreme laser-like focus, especially on long putts. I missed one from what, 30 feet away, something like that. Okay. Yeah, into the circle. Deep. From deep, deep. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is, uh, look at him. He knows it. I love footer. it. footer. Unreal. <laughs> it's insane. Oh, that is beautiful to watch. <laughs> and he's still out. Uphill, though. Let's go. What? This dude does not like bogeys at all. Like, he just really dislikes them. Dude, the thing about it is, is he was halfway there pulling some Kevin Jump Putt Jones. Ricky's really good. And I know he's playing a game essentially with a child's toy, but I wish I had that kind of focus. Unfortunately, he's pretty generous with his time, and every once in a while, he breaks down how he does what he does. So I'm dialed in I'm locked in on that on that chain link I don't care if there's dogs going by I don't care if there's people doing jumping jacks my one goal is to stare at that chain link and let my muscle memory take over from there so staring at that link the entire way back forward went hit that link and for me the most important thing with a putt is to stare at that spot and for me when I'm just this close there's not much movement there's not much wind I'm staring at the middle link but if there's a crosswind or something I may be staring at the right link, because I want it to start at the right link of the basket, and then the crosswind's going to take it to the middle. All right, sounds simple enough, right? Stare, stare at the link. If I move away, if I'm over here, right, it's, it's even that much harder. I got to deal with the candle. I don't want to hit our feet. <laughs> Even though I love this game, I've come to the realization that I am probably not one of those handful of people that is going to be getting a million dollar contract to play disc golf. My demonstration this morning shows I've still got a lot of work to do. Even though I love this game, the truth is I'm a much better father, I'm a much better minister, I'm a much better podcaster, probably than I will ever be a disc golfer. And that's, that's okay. Thanks to this congregation, I have space to continue to explore what it means to help plan worship, to collaborate with Pastor Kate, even to spend some time here in the pulpit. You provide me with space to care for my family, to work on my other side jobs, to volunteer in our community, even to play more disc golf. And this is one of my communities. You are one of the places where I help find my focus. There might be other distractions in life that get in my field of vision, but I know here at University Mennonite, I can recenter myself. And it really does take a community, right? It takes a community of various shapes and sizes, communities even beyond our church here today. 
to keep us going and to keep us finding our focus. It's the people in our lives who provide us with affirmation and support, helping each one of us continue to make sense of our various callings in life. It takes a community not only to affirm a calling, but to give it the support and care that it needs to continue on. It's tempting, I know, it's tempting in our American context to see our calling, to see our focus as deeply personal or individualistic. Just like my disc golf game, I might think that my own sense of focus is really based purely on my own work ethic, or lack thereof, my internal capacity, my strength, my natural talents, but that's overlooking the community factors. It's overlooking that I belong to Center County Disc Golf Association. I play often with people here in our local community. I watch and I learn from people like Ricky Wysocki. I wouldn't function as well as an individualistic lone disc golfer. Just like I wouldn't survive in the world without a community of support in my daily life. Our focus as believers is deeply shaped by the community in which we exist. Our sense of purpose finds its meaning and value more fully in a community. And a calling that ignores the connectedness to the world feels isolating, empty, and alienating. Our best focus when we are connected to God's kingdom, as Paul puts it, when we are connected to the body of Christ. In his letter to the Romans, in this 12th chapter, Paul writes, for as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. This vision of an organization being likened to a body is a way to remind us of the power of collaborative focus. Despite our diversity in which who we are and what we all bring to the body varies from person to person, despite members with so many different functions, we are called to be in community with each other and to function within a framework that most benefits the group. Paul understood that for the early church, the unity they found in Jesus Christ was more than just circumstantial. In fact, that unity was layering the groundwork for a system for how God's kingdom was and is taking shape. Each individual focus is really about finding harmony for the greater good. If I miss a disc golf putt, hopefully you're there to tap it in for me. So how does that apply to us today? How do we support each other as a communal body in a world where our day jobs don't always provide us the stability or security that we want? When we live in a world that struggles to find the right focus for all of its citizens? How do we honor and lift each other up when our pathways don't always go as they intended or when a dramatic shift occurs, disrupting us from our focus? Well, that's when it becomes even more essential that we lean on our community to help us navigate this world. We do not do this alone. We cannot make sense of our place in the world alone. We cannot do this without the people around us to love and support us, to affirm us and to offer us direction and hope. This is absolutely crucial if we truly believe that our calling is connected to a mutual relationship where we give and receive for the greater good of all. I may never putt like Ricky Wysocki. I almost certainly never will be paid a million dollars to play disc golf. But in community, perhaps I find my focus in other areas. Perhaps I discover how I fit within the body with the help and support of those around me. Friends, may we continue to be a community that celebrates the ways that we have been called. May we focus May we be a community that encourages, shapes, and helps to guide our sense of focus. May we offer a space to explore what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. One more for good luck. <laughs> Wasn't meant to be. <laughs>
walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear from him who spoke. As none e'er spoke, but we believe him near. We may not touch his hands and sides. Cry, my Lord, my Lord and God. hymn this week um, and it feels good that uh, Ben missed a couple of <laughs> shots because I miss a, I miss uh, notes so um, this is this is new to all of us so I'm going to play it once through and I'm going to take it fairly slowly so that you can uh, really hear the melody and then we'll sing all the verses and if you can like uh, Follow the the new notes at the same time as listening as thinking about the words. They're they're really uh, meaningful, I think. So.
nice to see everyone out today here in the sanctuary and on Zoom. If there are any visitors and you feel comfortable, you can introduce yourself or those who are with you can introduce you. So any visitors today? Stand up, stand up. I'd like to introduce my tenant who's been in my house for the past two years. And I'm going to let him tell you his name. Good morning. I'm Hasil Lira. I'm from Texas, and I'm here doing my PhD in mechanical engineering. And I feel very welcome, so thank you. Thank you for coming. Any others? Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? We got sisters here. <laughs> What's Jim saying? <laughs> Gloria is uh, reaching a milestone, three quarters of a century, oh. to, uh, on the seventh. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Did you have something, Carol? Oh, it was you, Gloria. Okay. All right. We'll anybody else? We'll sing Happy Birthday to Gloria. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Gloria, happy birthday to you. And many more. Any announcements today? You know what I'm going to say. Meat canning starts tomorrow in Lewistown, and there's a group of people, I think, that are going to come from this side of the mountain and go over. We're meeting about 9, and we'll do what needs to be done to can meat to go around the world, and some of it will stay here in Pennsylvania. So it's our practice to have an adult education event on the first and third Sundays. So today we'll be having a sermon response. I think the best thing we can do is to have a Frisbee golf tournament. <laughs> I guess our windows might suffer, so let's, let's skip that. <laughs> yeah, but Ben will join us and we can uh, reflect on the message of the entire service as well as his message. Two weeks from today is a special event with visitors. Ken Klein Smeltzer will be coming. He's married to Bonnie, who spoke a couple weeks ago. And he's going to be bringing three ex-prisoners with him and a focus on the needs of prisoners in Center County and ex-prisoners. So he'll share a little bit in the service, and then we'll have um, from like 11.30 to 12.15, the prisoners will have a panel. They'll share with us. And then the fellowship meal follows that. So that's two weeks from today, February 19. Uh, I'd like to piggyback on that meat canning, uh, put a little rubber to the road here. I plan on going over on Tuesday, and anybody would like to go over, see me, or if you're online, uh, email me, text me. We'll set up a time schedule so we can actually get over there. So let me know. This is Bethany. I just want to add that um, that Sunday that Ken will be here and there will be a potluck. There will also be an activity for the children. We can move the practice basket out to the park, Ken, if you want to get a tournament started. Um, <laughs> really, though, I hope that you will continue to sit with this Romans 12 passage. I'm glad that it talks about offering grace because I get to preach again next Sunday and it's been many years since I've preached back-to-back -back weeks. So I'm, I'm glad for your grace. But also, I'm hoping we can focus next week on what Paul says make up a healthy body. So he says, um, we have different gifts uh, in prophecy, uh, in ministry, in teaching, in exhortation, in giving, in generosity, in leading, in being compassionate, and in cheerfulness. 
if you can think of ways that our community has given that to you or you've seen it in others, send me a video, and I'm going to include some talking heads throughout next week's service that highlight the way that we have or tried to be uh, the body of Christ here together at University of Mennonite Church. It doesn't have to be long, 10 seconds. It doesn't have to name names, or it can be very, very specific if you'd like. Um, but I'll, I'll send an email out early this week as well, nudging you again to think about the ways we have been the body of Christ together here. My name is Ankit Saxena, and I had an announcement for the gentlemen. We are hoping to start men's breakfasts back up again. So this coming Thursday at 7 a.m., uh, all men are invited to join us at the East College Avenue Waffle Shop. And uh, yeah, we'll have a good time. I know that Jim and Joel have already uh, told me that they're going to be there. So we'll, I'll see everybody there. Yeah, I guess I'll finish up. Um, you know, I'm uh, Rodney Boo Baker. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Shavis Creek announcement where I work at. So February 17th, a Friday from 7 to 30 p.m., we're having another uh, really good Al Pro Al program. And the first 30 minutes will be inside, side show talking. My friend Carolyn will be helping me with that, and little calls, and we'll go outside a little bit and call. So you have to you have to actually go to Shavis Creek and online and say to sign up. It's free, but you have a cut off money. Last fall we did one, and it was about 30 people. So, and last year we did hear a couple of screech owls. That was fun, so you never know. But it's also great for kids, with their kids, take them out. They, they'll have a great time, as adults too. Okay, Ben will have the benediction. Friends, would you stand for our benediction, if you're able? <clears throat> My friends, may we continue to be a community that celebrates the ways we've been called. May we continue to be a community that encourages, shapes, and helps guide our sense of focus. Go in peace. Amen. Yeah. Uh.